Hey guys, welcome back to another video in my tips and strategies series. Uh, and and we're actually going to look at two games um, uh, in this video. So, uh, and the reason is because not much actually happens in really the first half of both of these videos. In fact, in this first one, not much happens at all. And uh, I end up having uh, a good game, but not a great game and you'll end up seeing uh, why. So uh, what ends up happening, just to get you caught up, we are jumping into Los Leones, and there's not a lot that really happens here. Uh, I jump onto this building, and I know that there's a guy somewhere underneath me. So I think I have a pistol at this point, and that's all I've got. So I end up, or uh, I'm not sure what weapon I've got. I guess it doesn't really matter. Uh, I knew that I didn't really want to get into a fight with the guy who was down underneath me because uh, I wasn't really... Yeah, he probably was going to have a better gun than I, I was, so I just wanted to go ahead and kind of get out of there. So what I end up doing through most of this game is I actually don't see really anybody, and some of that ends up being by choice uh, a little bit later on. So... Uh, all that ends up happening inside of Los Leones, and we'll go ahead and actually put it just halfway through. So I end up being the only person left. Now, I end up finding an M4 and a SCAR. Uh, I've got a four-time scope on the SCAR. Uh, and half the reason that I'm staying in Los Leones at this point is because I'm still trying to find some attachments to go to my guns. Um, and I had found a ton of... Uh, first aid kits and boosts and everything so I knew I was going to be able to take a bunch of damage from the circle and it wasn't really going to make any impact on me at all I was going to be fine so uh, all that really happens halfway through the game is I'm just and there weren't a lot of people that jumped into Los Leones so I really didn't even have an opportunity to get into too many fights really just that first guy uh, I don't see anybody else so we'll go ahead and fast forward a little bit more. So at this point, I have now found uh, a vehicle. And I am coming along here. And I've said it to two times. That's why it's going so fast. And so, okay. What ends up happening is I decide that what I want to do is to get over here uh, onto this side of the circle. Now, the reason I'm trying to do this is because I knew that where the plane had come in, that most of the people would be on this side. And anytime you're coming into a circle late, it's better for you to try to pick a spot where you think there's going to be less people because everyone is going to know where you are because they're going to hear the vehicle. So when you give away your position for free, it's better to try to be in a spot where there's at least going to be less people to take pot shots at you uh, and get you down. Um, so that's why I end up moving into the area that I'm at. So the next circle ends up being really kind. Um, so I'm already in the next circle at this point. So the main thing that kind of happens, that kind of dictates how I'm going to play the remainder of this game, ends up being this guy right here, uh, Wombler Man. Now this guy has a fantastic game. He is taking people out left and right. I'm going to go ahead and set it back to two times. Now, as you can see, uh, he actually just went to an airdrop. He ends up getting the M249. What Wombler Man actually does in this game is he just starts taking people out. He takes people out left and right. Uh, he gets so many people down. Uh, he's just goes on a tear so the reason that kind of dictates what I'm going to do is because I can hear these shots and I can look up here in the kill feed and I can actually see what weapon he's using so here's what I know I know that I'm in the circle and I know that the guy who's really closest to me is Wombler Man and he's got the M249 and once I start seeing him just taking people out left and right um, I know that I don't want to get into any kind of ranged combat with this guy because I know that he's basically going to kind of just... Uh, he's going to have too much of an advantage. So I know that he's going to end up being the guy. He gets down another guy. 
uh, he's going to end up being the person that I'm going to probably have to end up engaging. So what I want to do is to make it a more level playing field. I know I don't want to get into a ranged fight. I want to get into sort of a mid-range to even a, a close range fight. Uh, that's what I'm hoping for. So I decide that what I need to do at this point is kind of just wait. And I need to let the circle kind of dictate where it is I'm going to go. And I'm going to just kind of wait to, for my opportunity to engage with this guy. And as the game kind of progresses, uh, we'll just kind of keep watching. Um, he ends up getting, uh, takes down two more people right over here. Uh, it's funny because he actually doesn't see Case Face over here uh, initially. And a guy on a motorcycle makes an appearance. And so these guys just kind of miss each other right there. You can see how close they are, but they don't actually engage one another right away. There's just enough cover for them not to see it. So here comes Foresight, and uh, Wombler Man and Case Face both start shooting at Foresight. And then they backtrack and end up uh, just engaging each other. Wombler Man goes ahead and heals up. And again, uh, he ends up getting case face down right here chucks a grenade actually and ends up taking him out boom he goes down now Wombo Man gets into a fight with Foresight and he's able to get him down so Wombler Man is just having a fantastic game I mean he just is so uh, he's a little bit further away from me but I still see the kill count I see he's just racking up um, all these kills and so I know I'm still probably gonna have to engage with this guy so you can see where the next circle comes in and we're down to nine people at this point so I know that what I want to do is I can see the map I know I'm still gonna be in a, in a fairly decent uh, elevated position right over here so this is where I'm trying to get to is to stay uh, within these rocks and um, I'm just kind of lucky that there's not a lot of people around me at this point, that the Wombler is still the closest guy, and I know that this is the guy I do not want to engage at the moment. I know I'm going to have to uh, if somebody else doesn't take him out, but uh, I just kind of keep sticking to my, my plan, and my plan is just to kind of continue to wait. We get down to five people at this point. Wombler ends up taking some more shots. Uh, over to Hamster. I can still hear these shots coming off. Uh, he doesn't get Hamster down. Uh, Cuddles actually nails Wombler. So Wombler's definitely taken a lot of damage this game, but he just keeps finding a way to kind of make it through. Now, here's a key thing that kind of happens. So you can see where it is that I'm moving to, and I'm getting into the circle. Wombler jumps into the dune buggy. Now when he does this, I hear it. So now I know that this is going to be Wombler. I know that he is going to be the guy that was in the dune buggy, and I can hear where the dune buggy is. Uh, he stops to heal up, and I keep looking at my kill feed to see if the play zone is going to kill him. And when I realize that it doesn't, um, that's when I know that this guy is somewhere up here on top of these rocks. Now we're down to three people. So I'm kind of looking off into the distance. I can hear that gunshot. So uh, Captain Teton is taking shots at the last guy, which is Wombler. So now I know where both people are. Once I know where both people are, I need to kind of wait to see if I'm going to get an opportunity to uh, take either one out. So I know Captain is over on the other side of the map, and I keep looking up, looking for Wombler. Uh, I'm not seeing him at this point. Then I see him jump down. I switch over to my M4, and now he's taking shots. Once he's taking shots, he gets Captain down. I move up. And I'm able to take out Wombler and I get the chicken dinner. This is not my finest game, but as far as the strategy worked for what it is that I wanted to do, it worked perfectly. Um, 
at the end of the day, did Wombler deserve the win? This guy definitely did. He did a whole lot more in this game than I did. He had a fantastic game. He played really, really well. Uh, I was just able to end up kind of doing what it is that I wanted to do in this game. Uh, I executed my strategy, and it ends up working out. So I'm not saying this is a model game. Uh, it's just a good example of I picked my strategy, I stuck with it, and it ends up working out. So let's go ahead and look into another game where at least I do a little bit more um, in this game. Alrighty guys, so in this game, I end up jumping into El Pozo. You can see where the plane is coming down. And I end up getting really, really lucky in this game because I end up being sort of in the center of the circle the entire game, except for the very, very end. Um, so I end up jumping into uh, El Pozo, which is one of my favorite places to drop. I think it's, it, Pozo and Los Leones are basically my two favorite places to drop. I like the layout of the cities, uh, it's sort of guerrilla warfare, um, there's a ton of buildings, a ton of cover, uh, I like it when uh, games basically end uh, anywhere in the south, uh, really, but also uh, in El Pozo, I, I just, I love games that end there, it's just, to me, it's a lot of fun to play play there so we'll kind of look in and you can see that there's basically nobody uh in here we got uh knifey air 52 and fatal frog and myself and then we got guys down in monte nuevo and that is it uh for the area so i'm able to kind of move into a bunch of different buildings i end up getting a bunch of um uh, all the stuff that I basically need for the entire game. Uh, I find a VSS and I have an AKM. I actually would have preferred a SCAR or an M4. I never find one uh, through all the buildings that I go through, um, but it uh, ends up working out for me. So at this point, I don't want to leave Pozo because I'm in the center of the circle. I kind of want to see if I end up having to move, then I'll move when I need to. But at this point, I'm sort of in the center. I might as well just hang out here, get everything I need and all that. So nothing actually happens for me until really the end of the game. So we'll kind of go halfway in. Uh, ends up circles are still being here in the center. And the thing is, there's really nobody in Pozo. Nobody comes in. I'm not leaving because there's really no place that makes sense for me to run to. So I'm going to just kind of stick uh, with my plan of, of staying in Pozo until I need to leave. Uh, problem is I don't ever see anybody to uh, take shots at. So uh, I'm down here uh, in this building, and I kind of just keep looking. I'm, I move from window to window looking for people to engage. Never actually see anybody. So we'll fast forward here a little bit more because, again, not much is going on. So now we're down to uh, 12 people, uh, soon to be 11 people. So, again, guys, I just get lucky in the fact that I, I'm constantly in the middle of this circle uh, and not much else is going on. Now, one guy who ends up having uh, a really good game is a guy named McLaul X, and uh, he is coming from the top up here. Now, I'm calling this video outgunned because in the previous game, um, there's a guy with the M249 Wombler Man, and um, he's got a better gun than I've got, and so I try to pick my strategy with him. Now, McLaul ends up getting a Groza, so he had hit an airdrop, gets the Groza. And this guy actually has a really good game. So when I see that McLaw starts taking people out left and right, um, I know that what I want to do is be constantly looking at the kill feed to see like if this guy goes down. Uh, and the reason for that is the Groza is a fantastic, really powerful gun. So I know that if I'm going to have to get into a fight with this guy, I, I need to kind of have an advantage going into that fight because... Uh, if it's a straight up fight, this guy is going to get me down immediately because uh, that's just the power of his weapon. So we get down to 11 people. I'm still back into my area. I am not seeing much going on at this point. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward a little bit more here. So 
the next circle coming in, you know, I'm still in this circle. We'll go ahead and kind of fast forward and get it down. So uh, this circle ends up closing, ends up coming in, and where the next circle is, that is the first time that I have to move out of where I'm at and into a new area. So we'll kind of see where this next circle goes because it kind of dictates where it is that I want to end up. Uh, and I end up seeing somebody along the way. So we're down to nine people. I still haven't seen a single person that I can engage at this point. So I see where the next circle is, and I know that where I want to go is right here. I want to get into this building, and I need to get over into this corner, have a little bit of cover. And so that's where it is that I want to go. And I know that I need to get there sooner rather than later because I'm going to hug the blue line. I'm going to have a little bit of cover, but it's an open area right here. What I don't know is that there's really nobody else down here. And I was worried that there was going to be somebody in this building or maybe even in this building that would move over to here. So all of a sudden, I hear somebody running along. And my AKM... And I'm able to get down uh, Art, Arth, Mail, whatever that guy's name is. I have no idea. So I'm able to get this guy down, and then it kind of turns out, you know, I don't stop to raid this guy. I don't have time, but um, I had plenty of first aid kits, plenty of boosts. I kind of had everything I needed. And so I go ahead and I start moving over to where it is that I want to end up. Where I'm trying to get to is going to be the corner over here. And so I'm kind of moving up into this area. Everybody else is now moving down uh, into this guy. Elvis is outside the play zone. And he stops to heal up. And I can't remember if he makes it or not. And the answer is no, he does not. So we get down. I'm moving over. I end up taking some damage from the blue zone, but it's not a problem. I've got plenty of first aid kits, all the health I need, uh, everything I'm going to need. So, oh, high sun power. He takes out, uh, he was just in a fight, takes this guy out. So he's able to heal up. McLaw has worked his way down. He ends up being right over here. And we got two guys, Air 52 and Portuguese Blade, over in this building. Now, when I watched this replay originally, uh, Air 52 knows that there's somebody else in this building at this point. And the other thing is you can see where the blue line is, and you can actually see uh, what Air knows is that somewhere along here in this building, this guy is in this front section. So that's what he's kind of waiting on. Now, McLaw gets really, really lucky here uh, because Ohio Sun Power almost gets him down. Almost. Um, he, I mean, he's got a sliver of health. Ends up doing a lot of damage. Ends up chucking a bunch of grenades. And McLaw, I mean, you can see how much health this guy has. And uh, he just says, all right enough of this I'm getting out of here so he ends up taking off uh, we're down to five people still at this point and the circle is about to start moving in and we'll kind of look at this from air 52's point of view and um, blue wall starts moving in and you can see what ends up happening air has to jump out this window gets lucky gets into a fight kind of move over to my point of view I'm moving in I get that guy down really, really quick. I move up to this wall. Once I'm here, I'm thinking, okay, maybe the blue wall is going to stop. I couldn't tell exactly where it was going to stop. Uh, turns out it does not stop there, so i got to move out from where I'm at. But it works out because I'm able to get behind this container. And so then I go ahead and heal up. So we're down to three people, and what I know at this point is that the guy with the Groza is still in the game. So... This is the guy I'm concerned about because this is the guy I'm going to have to get down because uh, I can't get into a straight fight with him. So we'll kind of fast forward a little bit. Well, actually, just kind of see if if uh, host oh hi son power had moved just a little bit around this corner, he actually would have seen McLaw and he would have been able to get him down. 
Um, you can kind of see from his perspective, he just doesn't see him. If he had just moved just a little tiny bit, uh, he actually would have had him. So we'll kind of look at it from uh, McLull's point of view. This guy's doing a good job and kind of looking in every direction. Um, just doesn't see anybody. He heard gunshots, so he knows that I'm in the area that I'm at. He knows I'm somewhere over there. The blue wall starts to come. He chucks a grenade. And he starts to take fire from Ohio Sun. He switches over to the Groza. And boom, boom, boom. It is over. It is done. So uh, he ends up doing a good job. Now looking at it from my point of view, I see McLaw move over. And I'll kind of pause it here real quick. Just so you can see what it is that McLaw is doing. The, this poor guy, unfortunately, ran out of first aid kits. So he is starting to use uh, bandages at this point. So kind of look at it from my point of view. I know where this guy's at. I can see a little bit of movement. And I ran into uh, a little bit of a glitch where I was trying to sight down my scope. And for some reason, I was too close to this uh, little... Uh, building right here and it wouldn't so I end up having to, to back up just to be able to sight down but I'm able to finally do it lean over I take one shot McLaw has no choice he's trying to get out of the way just because uh, he doesn't have any health and I'm able to get the guy down so I get my second chicken dinner uh, for the day at this point and I ended up having a good game didn't see anybody for most of the game until really the very end of the game. Uh, I never actually took any firepower at this point. So in both of these games, I'm outgunned um, with really the last guy. And so both times, I'm just able to kind of uh, use as much strategy as I can, put myself in a good position in both games in order to sort of uh, get the win and you know in both games uh, I definitely get lucky with some of the circles and you know I get lucky uh, near the end of the game uh, so uh, that is going to be it for this video so thanks so much guys and uh, we will catch you next time see ya